Welcome to a new episode of Playing with Chunk. This time, something I already had before. A mainframe from IBM. But this time it's a little bit different. I don't want to take it apart. I want to turn it on. That's something new. Okay, let's see how that works. I must say I don't have a lot of experience with mainframe, uh, in fact no experience at all. And I have never turned on one of these and uh, well, let's see what happens. It should be complete, it has two large power connectors, that's three phase 16 amp each. Um, normally there, are, there is a 32 amp connector on this machine, but uh, 16 amp is enough because the maximum power consumption is about 4.2 kilowatts. So the Z890, which we have here, is uh, a relatively small machine. It only has one CPU book, that's the part here. Um, it has space up to four books, but with more than one book it would be a Z990 and that's a totally different price range. Um, then we have here two IBM ThinkPad notebooks. There are two of them for redundancy, so I think because everything in this system is redundant from the power supply, even CPUs is more than one chip. Okay, let's plug it in. And just if you're wondering, yes, both go to the same power line, which is not recommended, but it works. All right, at the moment we have a green light here on the front and the same green light blinking in the back. I don't know if blinking is normal or not, but well, let's turn it on and see what happens next. So the notebook has turned on, at least the first one. Some fans start spinning. Notebook tells me to check the date, so I think the system battery is probably low. Okay, that should do the trick. OS2 Warp Server for eBusiness, yes. That was a time when IBM tried to market OS2 instead of Windows. Well then, I think they still use it, but well, 
only on this niche product. So we have 1.5 gigabyte of disk space in this laptop, of course. Um, how much RAM? Uh, 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 I think I missed that. Okay. Oh, there is even a hard disk D, which also has 1.5 gig. Okay, maybe there's a 3 or 10 gigabyte drive in the laptop. We may have a problem on the back power supply. It's constantly blinking and clicking and also the light here doesn't seem right because on the front side that's already green, steady green. So we probably have a defective power supply here. Okay, there is not much happening on the notebook here. By the way, that's the standard username and passwords. You can find them in the manuals. It's nothing secret. Okay, it does something. It seems it does a reboot. Oh. It tries to do something with the graphic card. Okay, we got graphics. Or, well, at least we got Windows without graphics. And then it boots again, but in a, in a different resolution. Pentium 4 with 2 GHz. So it seems it has to reboot to change the screen resolution. Okay. Why not? Maybe that's one of the benefits of OS2. And there is absolutely nothing on the second uh, notebook here. Maybe that one is powered from the back side. Who knows? That's the reason why it doesn't work. But I think one working should be enough. IBM initialization is in progress. Okay, that sounds good. Okay, IBM license agreement. Um, there is nothing you can click. And I know that because yes, I started it before just to see if it's worth to make a video or not and that disappears after a while by itself there is no ok button no nothing you just have to wait
and just in case this system looks familiar to you the Z890 um, it's exactly the same system as the other guy took home that kit that bought a mainframe computer you have probably seen one or two videos of him um, Krukowski was the name I think so I hope I spelled that right um, yeah he bought such a machine for I don't know a couple of hundred dollars and he brought it home and made it work well I don't know exactly what's happening but some other blowers just came up and uh, the second notebook now also makes a picture on the screen so it's not just a waiting license code stuff oh I got the fan error on the second notebook okay which fan doesn't work don't know sounds a bit like an airplane Okay, something changed. We have a log on screen and a super red status indicator and we have hardware messages blinking. So let's try service and surf mode. Yeah, seems to work. Okay then. So as far as I understand it, we have to select our machine here. Maybe it's possible to have more machines in this um, administration software thing. And we can click the hardware messages and we have a power problem yes i know that that's why it is blinking power failure no 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 no, no. service is required request service and if this machine is set up properly it also has a network connection directly to ibm and we can request the service well let's try that for IBM service, call ma 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 phone number, da 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 serial number. Okay. Well, that's it. It doesn't call automatically. Okay. Well, it doesn't have a modem, and if it has, it's not plugged in. The only connections I made is power right now. Okay. Task list. What's that? Deactivate. No. So I think I probably have to put it in service mode. No. Ah, okay. Toolbox. I'm looking for the power on. 
Oh, here it is. CPC recovery, power on, system power. Okay, I just first have to select my system again. Uh, not that. Thank you. Just select system power and we have the possibility to power it on or off power on in progress duration time 1 hour 15 minutes 0 seconds well fortunately I can tell you it doesn't take that long it takes about well a couple of minutes Okay, power on is complete, took five and a half minutes instead of one hour fifteen, but I think that's just the worst case scenario, probably with all the options and everything, but okay, we have power on. Well, I just clicked one of the red icons here which is this one service required state and uh, it tells me service is required for the following reasons N mode power I think that's because everything is now running on only one power uh, cord or one power supply uh, then the primary SE, that's the service uh, element, that's the, the notebook here. Uh, loss of communication with alternate. I bet it's SE, yes, because the second notebook has no power, so they cannot communicate. And the service network is in N mode, so that's probably not redundant. Okay, there's not much I can do against it because I don't have a power supply. Okay, I select the CPC here and I select checkout tests. It's always good to run some tests. Can vary between one and a half and three hours. Okay, I don't think I will spend that much time. Okay, it seems it does a power on reset right now. In the meantime, let's have a look what is all inside this cabinet here. So here we have the power supplies. That's the input cable, input connector, goes over here. That's the distribution unit, all these connectors here, that's only for power. Here something similar, that's one of the bulk power regulators which is enabled, that's good, because the other one doesn't light green. Then we have a processing unit book, so it's not a CPU, because it's not a central processor anywhere. There are many processors that work together, so they call it a processor unit. 
another central processor unit. And the whole module here is called a book because, well, it's in the shelf like a book, maybe. Then we have two notebooks. It already looks like on the ISS they have 80 of them on board. Here we only have two and I have a little bit less of the captain tape. Then that's the thick cables here that come down from the CPU. We have three of them and they connect this I.O. cage here with all the I.O. cards. And we have one with two loopback connectors. Don't know what that is. Then we have something that looks like fiber, that's also a loopback connector. Can we see the laser light? Yes, we can see it. That, the violet light here. So that is active. Uh, then we have something similar that's also uh, an optical interface. We have more optical interfaces here. Can you see something here? No. And the same as on this side. Oh, there is something. So we have here Gigabit Ethernet, okay, with old optical connectors. SCOM, that's, um, I don't know, FICOM is fiber connection. Then another Gigabit Ethernet, fast Ethernet, that means only 100 megabit. Yeah, I think that's it. So everything will be connected here with optical interfaces of all kinds. Let's see what the backside has for us. On the backside we have the same power supply arrangement with one difference. This one is just blinking a bit silly. That one is also blinking, that shouldn't be. I don't know if the yellow light is normal. Then we have the back side of that book. That's the DC converters for the CPU module, for the CPU book. There's some IO card space which is seems to be unpopulated at the moment. And then that's where the blower are. Uh, there are two of them, or maybe four. And there is more I.O. space, which is at the moment completely empty. Okay, I just missed the end of the uh, power on reset or power reset. It took eight minutes of the seven that it uh, displayed. Now check out tests in progress. Activation successful. Okay, whatever it activates, it is successful. That's nice. Okay. I think it does, it activates the partitions. So that's a concept here. You can uh, make like uh, virtual machines. You can use single CPU cores and parts of the memories and create a, an independent machine called a partition. So I hope I get that right. If not, please correct me in the comments. And uh, that makes it possible to run completely different operating system. 
So at the moment I think there are two. It's set OS or Linux and you can have one partition running set OS, the other partition running Linux. You can also make one partition with all the CPUs and all the memory to create a huge powerful machine or well whatever you need. Duration time 1 hour and 24, uh, 42 minutes. Loading test programs, ah, that's new. Didn't see that before. Okay, it seems at the moment we have four partitions. Is that possible? And it loads test programs to all of them. And it also does a lot here on the on the internal hard drive of the notebook. So it seems it's loading the programs from the notebook to the processor here. Saving print buffer. Okay. Whatever that means. Okay, loading more test programs. Yeah, I think I will stop that. In the meantime, all the yellow lights here has turned into green lights. I don't know if they all have been green before. No, there were certainly some yellow ones. Maybe we have laser light right now. No, not here. Not visible. How about that one? Uh, no. Doesn't seem so or it's in a wavelength my camera cannot see. But we did see that one. Yes, right. I can see it. Yes, I can see it with the naked eye. It's a red laser and on camera it's a violet laser, that means it has a quite a quantity of infrared. Okay, still testing. Okay, I think there is not much more I can do with this machine because it doesn't even have a hard drive attached, I cannot install any software and I don't have any software so let's be brutal and pull the emergency brake right now. Silence. Nice. And because many of you are certainly thinking, hey, what's inside? Okay, let's have a look. And just in case you are wondering, yes, I did unplug the power supply from the mains just for safety reasons. I mean, we have, I think it's a 300 volt DC bus here and I don't really want to touch that. So one screw is coming out, the other one is retained. Okay, why not? So, and now we can slide out that CPU book. And the idiot with the Lamborghini is turning its circles. It sounds like a racing ground outside here sometimes. Okay. 
how heavy may that be? I think it's 18 kilograms. It's a sticker on it. Yeah, that could be true. Okay, and that's how the back plane looks. It's just a big large connector and here we have some grills where the fans are underneath here you can see it a little bit some bit of the fan yes and everything else is just empty because that's a 890 and not a 990 and in the 990 we have up to four of these books Okay, and that's the book. Let's remove the cover and don't judge the book by its cover. Well, I haven't worked with one of those before, so I think we have two handles. So let's just try to remove that whatever that is oh looks like memory can you see that there are memory modules inside yes i think it's clearly visible okay and how to get these memories oh yes here it is memory 16 gig that's certainly extremely expensive uh, there's no way to expand that without the screwdriver okay let's put it to the side well i hope it's a little bit less complicated than it looks let's start here we have some Torx screws, Torx 10, I think. Yep, yeah. throw it away, that helps. Okay, first part comes off. It's not that bad, it's only eight screws. Okay, I can live with that. Yeah, it's mostly empty. I've just opened the uh, memory box here. Yeah, it's memory inside. What is the price? So, what kind of memory do we have? Are they socketed? Are they... What are they? Are they soldered to the board? No, 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 it's some kind of socket, but they don't have these levers to lever it out. So I need my own lever here. Probably it will break, because it's probably not a socket. Ooh, that looks ugly. Okay. Yeah, I see it now. So it's some kind of socket, but it's also soldiered. So I better 
push it back and hope I didn't harm anything so but well we don't care let me see if I can get that on camera can see that oh no it looks like a socket but there is clearly some solder down here so they it seems they put them in and then let them run through through an oven but well there is it's certainly super reliable you never have problem with the contacts here but if one of these modules fail you have to replace the entire box hmm maybe that's the reason why it's screwed together here we have some rubbers that push everything down so yes it's a 16 gigabyte memory box that can't be changed okay why not okay let's move to the cpu which is of course here oh and it's still warm um, this CPU has a power consumption of about 450 watts and that's one of the lowest because all the previous models of this set systems had up to 1000 watt per CPU chip here but chip is not the right uh, name because it's a multi-chip module they call it MCM and what we have here is a lot of capacitors uh, we got a 4700 microfarads each 6.3 volts so that's a lot of microfarads and we have the same amount or yes about the same amount here then we have these chip capacitors here and I think from the size there are certainly 100 microfarad or maybe even 500 470 so yes something about that and there's also a lot of them then are smaller capacitors to filter out even higher frequency disturbances and that's here that's the a temperature probe and as you see it actually has three connectors but only two are connected because there are three independent temperature sensors inside here and for redundancy yes they have three outputs so why they only needed two is not clear because I have here uh, a similar sensor from another system so that goes in here up to the rim here and also this one also has three separate pairs of wire a red a brown and a white red brown white yes it's the same but this one goes to one connector well i'm not sure if all three are connected but i think if they make three sensors they will also use it and here in this case they only use two of them well because it's a low cost machine and with low cost i mean it only costs maybe half a million or a million I don't know what the actual price was so let's remove that heatsink Ooh. that comes off quite easily where come that from? Oh, here. Okay. And it doesn't have any 
conventional uh, heat compound. It looks like it's just a drop of silicon oil. It's a very thin layer here, just a little bit of greasy. So, well, it's a huge area, so they probably don't need a lot of uh, any compound. Okay, let's see if we can get further into that block. Just look at this massive backplate here. Ask who's are numbered. One, two, three, four. They wanted to. They want you to do that in the right uh, order. And look how nice they machined it with a spiral. It's machined from a solid piece. Well, here you see it's sand cast and then machined. Okay, you can do that. Three. Ah. Sounds awful. Whoops. again they have some pretty strong uh, springs here you see that that's massive a lot of force that's why they need such a massive back plate here Well, when 8,000 contacts need to be pushed down, you need strong springs. By the way, 8,000, that's about the number we can expect here. So, something did go clunk. Just don't know what it was. It was not. Oh, maybe it was. Yes, it was. Okay. So, I have to clean that first. Yep. So, here it is the back side of the CPU chip and as I said before let's try to count these contacts so that's 10 20 30 40 maybe 50 that would be two and a half thousand per square and that's ten thousand in total so i think it's about eight thousand uh yeah and if you look closely you can see they look like small well they look a little bit spongy Just like little piles of wire that are cramped into a hole. It's not a uniform. So that's just some wire that acts like a spring and is squeezed together between the PCB and the actual chip. I know that because there is a clip here, plastic clip, and there is another clip on this side. 
and they retain this well that's the CPU socket or the CPU interface or however you want to see the uh, you want to call that and it has this springy wire piles here squeezed between the CPU and the board and that makes the contacts very simple and hopefully very reliable and now that's the heat spreader as you know that from your desktop uh, processor but the multi-chip module here and um, I read that in the in the red book so IBM has a red book for every machine with all technical details and stuff that is interesting uh, the, this is a glass ceramic multi-layer uh, substrate and it has 101 layers and inside this block here are 400 meters of wire to connect all the chip that are on the other side beneath that plate here so I think I will open that too well it took a while to all, uh, remove all the screws they all have uh, a spring washer and a normal washer underneath and if you also cut the label here you can then easily separate the two parts here and as you can see the heat spreader here that's solid copper more than 10 millimeters thick and from the weight I would say that frame is also copper and here we have something quite interesting it has metal sheet spacers here you can see those there's a one or two thicker spacers yes and then a thin one that is adjusted to the thickness of the chip because you don't want the chip to put under stress or under too much stress so they measure, measure, measure the chip they select the, the shims here accordingly to the thickness and then they just put it together because the chip here so all the or the multi-chip module which has its own number here uh, all the chips are on the other side and they are they touch directly to this copper uh, heat spreader and I don't want to take that apart because I already have another one from another machine which is similar and that will look like that so you have a little island of uh, copper for every single chip that is on that module here yeah it's about similar in size I think that one was a little bit bigger so we have 16 chips uh, four or eight are CPU chips then we have cache chips input output chips data encryption everything that's needed on a single multi-chip module there is of course a lot of uh, heat uh, transfer compound here everything is filled up and that's the reason why this chip is sticking very well to that heat spreader and at the moment i don't want to separate them because well I try to keep the machine in a working state it then looks similar to that one so we already know this side we haven't seen yet that side so this one has uh, 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight uh, chips. I think four of them may be CPU, four of them may be cache, it's from another system. Or oh, it's only two CPU chips and a lot of other functions. Yeah, that's also pretty nice. Okay, I hope that was a little bit interesting. Thanks for watching. Thank you.